and welcome back at the FinetLink channel. Today we will be focused at the transport layer. The transport layer is where the data is transported from one host to another. It uses two protocols, TCP and UDP protocol, and we will dive in into how TCP and UDP protocol work in the transport layer, but for the moment, let's use an analogy and think for the TCP as a getting a registered letter in the mail. You have to sign it before the mail carrier will let you have it. This will slow down the process a bit, but the senders know for certain that you received the letter and when you received that. And at the UDP protocol, it's more like a, a regular stamped letter. It arrives in your mailbox and if it does, it is probably intended for you, but it might actually be for someone else who doesn't live there. Sometimes it may not arrive in your mailbox at all. The sender cannot be sure that you received it, but there are protocols that use this UDP protocol for transporting the data. And the objective of this model is to compare the operation of transport layer protocols in supporting end-to-end -end communication. We will explain the purpose of the transport layer in managing the transportation of data in end-to-end -end communication. We will explain characteristics of TCP and UDP, and we even explain how TCP and UDP use port numbers. We even explain how TCP session establishment and termination process facilitate reliable communication. We will explain how TCP protocol data units are transmitted and acknowledged to guarantee delivery. And we even will compare the operation of transport layer protocol in supporting end-to-end -end communication. And for the first part, we will go through the first, fourth, first topics. The application layer programs generate data that must be exchanged between source and destination host. The transport layer is responsible for logical communication between applications running on different hosts. This may include service such as establishment, a temporary session between two hosts, and the reliable transmission of information for an application. And as it is shown here in this figure, the transport layer is the link between the application layer and the lower layers that are responsible for the network transmission. The transport layer has no knowledge of the destination host type, the type of media over which the data must travel, and the path taken by the data, the congestion on a leak, or the size of the network. But the transport layer includes two protocols, Transmission Control Protocol, TCP, and the User Data Protocol, UDP Protocol. The transport layers has many responsibilities. The first responsibility is tracking individual conversation. As the transport layer, each set of data flowing between a source application and a destination application is known as a conversation and is tracked separately. It is the responsibility of the transport layer to maintain and track this multiple conversation. And as it is illustrated here in this figure, a host may have multiple applications that are communicating across the network simultaneously. Most networks have a limitation of the amount of data that can be included in a single packet. Therefore, data must be divided into manageable pieces. The second responsibility is segmenting data and reassembling segments. 
it is the transport layer responsibility to divide the application data into appropriately sized blocks. Depending on the transport layer protocol used, the transport layer blocks are called either segments or datagram. And here in the figure, it is illustrated the transport layer using different blocks for each conversation. The transport layer divides the data into smaller blocks. They are easier to manage and transport. The third responsibility is to add header information. The transport layer protocol also add header information containing binary data organized into several fields to each block of the data. It is the value in these fields that enable various transport layer protocol to perform different function in managing data communication. The header information is used by the receiving host to reassemble the blocks of data into a complete data stream for the receiving application layer program. The transport layer ensures that even with multiply application running on a device, all application receive the correct data. The fourth responsibility is identifying the application. The transport layer must be able to separate and match multiple communication with different transport requirements needs. To pass data streams to the proper application, the transport layer identifies the target application using an identifier called a port number. As it is illustrated here in this figure, each software process that needs to access the network is assigned a port number unique to that host. And the last responsibility is conversation multiplexing. Sending some type of data across a network as a one complete communication stream can consume all the available bandwidth. This would prevent other communication conversation from occurring at the same time. It would also make error recovery and retransmission of damaged data difficult. And as it is shown here in this figure, the transport layer used segmentation and multiplexing to enable different communication conversation to be interleaved on the same network. Each Error checking can be performed on the data in the segment to determine if the segment was altered during transmission. And as for the transport layer protocol, IP is concerned only with the structure addressing and routing of packets. IP does not specify how the delivery or transportation of data at the packets take place. Transport layer protocols specify how to transfer message between hosts and are responsible for managing reliable requirements of conversation. The transport layer includes the TCP and UDP protocols. There are different applications that have different transport reliability requirements. Therefore, the TCP IP provides two transport layer protocol as it is shown here in this figure. And for the transmission control protocol, we can say that the IP is concerned only with the structure addressing and routing of packets from original sender to final destination. IP is not responsible for guaranteeing delivery or determine whether a connection between the sender and the receiver need to be established. TCP is considered a reliable full feature transport layer protocol which ensures that all of the data arrives at the destination. The TCP includes fields which ensure the delivery of the application data. These fields require additional processing by the sending and receiving host. The TCP transport 
is an app luggage to send in packages that are tracked from source to the destination. If a shipping order is broken up into several packages, a customer can check online to see the order of the delivery. The TCP provides reliability and flow control using this basic operation. The number and track data segments transmitted to a specific host from a specific application Acknowledge received data, retransmitted any acknowledged data after a certain amount of time, sequence data that might arrive in wrong order, and send data at an efficient rate that is acceptable by the receiver. In order to maintain the state of a conversation and track the information, TCP must for establish a connection between the sender and the receiver. And this is why the TCP is known as a connection-oriented protocol. And if you can see here, there is an animation that shows how the TCP segments and acknowledgement are transmitted between sender and receiver. The first th three segments will go to the destination. They will give an acknowledgement that I got the first segment, and then the sender will send the other one. That's how it works at the TCP protocol. And as for the UDP protocol is a simple transport layer protocol than the TCP protocol. It does not provide reliability and flow control, which means it requires fewer hardware fields. Because the sender and the receiver UDP process do not have to manage reliability and the flow control, this means that UDP datagrams can be proceed, processed sorry, faster than the TCP segment. UDP provides the basic function for delivering datagram between the appropriate application with very little overhead and data checking. UDP is a connectionless protocol because UDP does not provide reliability or flow control. It does not require an established connection. Because UTP does not track information sent or received between the client and server, UTP is also known as a stateless protocol. UTP is also known as a best effort delivery protocol because there is no acknowledgement that data is received at the destination. With UTP, there are no transport layer process that inform the sender of a successful delivery. UTP is like placing a regular non-registered letter in the mail. The sender of the letter is not aware of the availability of the receiver to receive the letter, nor is the post office responsible for tracing the letter or informing the sender if the letter does not arrive at the final destination. And here in this animation, you can see how the data, UDP datagram are being transmitted from sender to the receiver. And as you can see, they are all sent at, at the same time, but there will not be an acknowledgement 
from the destination to the server that the package has arrived, successfully arrived. Some application can tolerate some data loss during transmission over the network, but delays in transmission are unacceptable. And for this application, the UDP is better choice because it requires less network overhead. UDP is preferable for applications such as voice over IP. Acknowledgement and retransmission would slow down delivery and make the voice conversation unacceptable. UDP is also used by request and replay application where the data is minimal and retransmission can be done quickly. For example, domain name system use UDP for this type of transaction. The client requests IPv4 and IPv6 addresses for a known domain name for, from a DNS server. If the client does not receive a response in a predetermined amount of time, it simply sends the request again. For example, if one or two segments for a live video stream fail to arrive, it creates a momentary disruption in the stream. This may appear as distortion in the image or sound, but may not be notable by the user. If the destination device had to account for lost data, the stream could be delayed while waiting for retransmission, therefore causing the image or sound to be greatly degreed. In this case, it is better to render the best media possible with the segment received and frago reliability. For, for other applications, it is important that all the data arrives and it can be processed in its proper sequence. For this type of application, TCP is used as a transport protocol. For example, applications such as database databases, web browsers, and email clients require that all data that is sent arrive at the destination in its original condition. Any missing data could corrupt communication, making it either incomplete or unreadable. And, and, and this is important when accessing banking information over the web to make sure that all the information is sent and received correctly. Application de developers must choose which transport protocol type is appropriate based on the requirements of the application. Video may be sent over TCP or UDP. Application that streams stored audio and video typically use TCP. The application uses TCP to perform buffering, bandwidth probing, and congestion control in order to better control the user experience. Real-time video and voice usually use UTP but may also use TCP or both. A video conferencing application may use UTP by default, but because many firewalls block UTP, the application can also be sent over the TCP. Applications that stream stored audio and video use TCP. For example, if your network suddenly cannot support the bandwidth needed to watch an on-demand movie, the application pauses the playback. During the pause, you might see a buffering message while TCP works to re-establish the stream. When all the segments are in order and minimum level of bandwidth is restored, your TCP session resumes and the movie resumes playing. Here in the figure are summarized differences between UDP and the TCP protocol and in which case you can use each of those protocols. And there are listed even the required protocols properties for each of those. Now let's have an overview for each of those protocols. We will start with the transmission control protocol. To understand the differences between the TCP and UDP, it is important to understand how each protocol implements specific reliability features and how each protocol tracks conversation. The TCP also provides the following services. It establishes a session. 
which means that TCP is a connection-oriented protocol that negotiate and establish a permanent connection between source and destination device prior to forwarding any traffic. Through session establishment, the device negotiate the amount of traffic that can be forwarded at a given time and the communication data between the two can be closely managed. We'll ensure the reliable delivery and for many reasons it is possible for a segment to become corrupted or lost completely as it is transmitted over the network. The TCP ensures that each segment that is sent by the source arrives at the destination. We'll provide same order delivery because the network may provide multiple routes that can have different transmission rates, data can arrive in the wrong order. By numbering and sequencing the segments, the TCP ensures segments are reassembled into the proper order. And we even support the flow control. Network hosts have limited resources, and when the TCP is aware that these resources are overtaxed, it can request that the sending application reduce the rate of data flow. This is done by the TCP regulating the amount of data the source transmits. Flow control can prevent the need for retransmission of data when the resources of the receiving host are overhead. And as for the header, the TCP is a stateful protocol, which means it keeps track of the same of, sorry, of the state of the communication session. To track the state of the session, TCP records which information it has sent and which informa information has been acknowledged. The stateful session begins with the session establishment and ends with the session termination. A TCP segment adds 20 bytes of overhead when encapsulating the application layer data. And here it is shown the TCP header. And you, as you can see, the source port is 16-bit field used to identify the source application by port number. The destination port is 16-bit field used to identify the destination application by port number. The sequence number is a 32-bit field used for data reassembly process. Acknowledgement number is 32-bit field used to indicate the data has been received and the next byte accepted from the source. The header length is a 4-bit field known as data offset that indicates the length of the TCP segment header received a six-bit field that is reserved for future use. We have the control bit that is six bits that include bit codes or flags which indicate the purpose and function of the TCP segment. And we have the window size which is 16-bit field used to indicate the number of bytes that can be accepted at one time. We have the checksum which is 16-bit field used for error checking of the segment header and data. And we have the urgent field, which is a 16-bit field used to indicate if the content data is urgent or no. And now we can go to check the UDP protocol. And as for the UDP protocol, we have to know that UDP is such a simple protocol that is usually described in terms of what it does not do compared to the TCP. UDP feature includes that the data is reconstructed in the order that is received. Any segments that are lost are not resent. There is no session establishment and the sending is not informed about the resource availability. And as for the header, the UDP is a stateless protocol which means neither the client 
or the server tracks the state of the communication session. If reliability is required when using UDP as the transport protocol, it must be handled by the application itself. One of the most important requirements for delivering live video and voice over the network is that the data continues to flow quickly. Like video and voice application can tolerate some data loss with minimal or no noticeable effect and are perfectly suited with the UDP protocol. The blocks of communication in UDP are called datagrams and not segments. These datagrams are sent as best effort by the transport layer protocol. The header is far simpler than the TCP header because it only has four fields and requires eight bytes. The figure shows all the fields that are here. We have the source port, which is 16-bit field used to identify the source application by port number. We have the destination port, is a 16-bit field used to identify the destination application. By port number, we have the length, which is 16B that indicates that length of the UDP datagram header. And we have even the checksum, which is also 16-bit field used to, for error checking of the datagram header and data. And as for the application that use each of those protocols, for the TCP protocol, it is a good example of how the different layer of the TCP IP protocol suite have specific roles. The TCP handles all tasks associated with diving the data stream into segments, providing reliability, controlling data flow, and reordering segments. TCP frees the application from having to manage any of these tasks. Applications like those are shown here in the figure and can simply send the data stream to the transport layer and use the service TCP. And as for the <coughs> UDP protocol, there are three types of applications that are best suited for UDP, live video and multimedia application. This application can tolerate some data loss but require little or no delay. Simple request and replay application. This application with simple transaction where a host send a request and may or may not receive a reply. This includes the DNS and DHCP server. Application that handle reliability themselves. On directional communication where flow control, error detection, acknowledgement and error recovery is not required, or can be handled by the application. In this case, we can use the UDP protocol. And here it is listed the applications that require the UDP protocol. We mentioned that there are some situations in which TCP is the right protocol and other situations where the UDP would be the right protocol, no matter what type of data is being transported, both of those protocols use port numbers. And here it is shown that the TCP and UDP header fields identify a source and destination application port number. The TCP and UDP transport layer protocol use port numbers to manage multiple simultaneous conversation. The source port is associated with the originating application on the local host, and the destination port is associated with the destination application on the remote host. And uh, the source and the destination ports are placed with the segment. The segments are then encapsulated with an, an IP packet. The IP packet contains the IP address of the source and destination. The combination of the source IP address and source port number or the destination IP address and the destination port number, it is known as a socket. And here, it is an example that the PC is simultaneously requesting FTP and web service from the destination server. And in the example, the FTP request generated by the PC includes the layer 2 MAC address. 
and the layer 3 IP address. The request also identifies the source port number as 1305 and the destination port number identifies the FTP server on port 21. The host also has requested a web page from the server using the same layer 2 and layer 3 addresses. In this case, it's using the source port number as 1099 and the destination port identifies the web service on the port 80. The socket is used to identify the server and service being requested by the client. The client socket might look like this with 10 99 representing the source port number as uh, 192.168.1.5 with the port 1099. The socket on web server might be 192.168.1.5 with the port 80. Together, these two sockets combine to form a socket pair. Sockets enable multiple process running on a client to distinguish themselves from each other and multiple connection to a server process to be distinguished from each other. The source port number acts as a return address for the requesting application. The transport layer keeps track of this port and the application that initiated the request so that when a response is returned, it can be forwarded to the correct application. The Internet Assigned Number Authority is the standard organization responsible for assigning various addressing standards, and including even the 16-bit port numbers. It has divided the range of numbers into three main port groups. We have the well-known port with uh, this range of port number, and these ports number are reserved for common or popular services and applications such as web, browser, email clients, and remote access. Defined well-known port for common service application enables clients to easily identify for associated service required. We have the registered port with this range of port number, and these port numbers are assigned to a requesting entity to use with specific process or applications. These processes are primarily individual applications that a user has chosen to install rather than communicate application that would receive a well-known port number. And we have even the private or dynamic ports with this range port number and these ports are also known as ethernet ports the client operating system usually assign port number dynamically when a connection to a service is initiated the dynamic port is then used to identify the client application during the communication and here in this table are listed some uh, common well-known port numbers and their associated application. Some applications may use both GCP and UDP protocol. For example, the DNS protocol use UDP when clients send requests to a DNS server, but the communication between two DNS servers always are with the TCP protocol. And for the unexplained TCP connection can be posed a major security th threat. And they can indicate that something or someone is connected to the local host. Sometimes it is necessary to know which active TCP connections are open and running on a network host. NetStat is an important network utility that can be used to verify this connection. And when you enter this command, you will have the list of the protocol in use, the local address and port number, the foreign address and the port number, and the connection state. By the default, this command will attempt to resolve IP addresses to domain name 
and port numbers to well-known application. If we use even a minus n, option can be used to display IP address and port number in the numerical form. And that was all about the first part of the transport layer. See you to the next session and thank you for being with us. And do not forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification button for the new video that will be uploaded.